It is Thursday, August the 13th. Joe Dalaron here with you for the COVID-19 Task Force update. The Commissioner of Public Safety, Lloyd Phillips, will be here in a few moments. Uh, there was, of course, a task force meeting yesterday. There were some uh, announcements made earlier today. Press releases were issued, and uh, we'll have an update from Lloyd about that and more. Uh, also coming up in just a few moments, we have uh, something on education, but not the uh, what we've been hearing about the education itself, but more about transportation. Just before we do that, though, just wanted to mention that uh, in Ghanawaga, there's still a water advisory underway. So if you're going to be uh, using your water for drinking, making tea or whatever, make sure it boils for at least a full three minutes after it starts to boil. So uh, it should be all fixed up by tomorrow and uh, they have to do one more test and then we should be back to normal. All right, let's, uh, let's get moving on the program. With school just around the corner, one of the uh, concerns has been about transportation, getting the kids to school or getting the students to school because they're not all kids, so to speak. Uh, the Gahnawaga Transportation Department has made plans for this year. It is going to be very complicated, what with COVID-19. So uh, we put together this little video to help explain some of the initiatives that are taking place. MCK Transportation Department presents Procedure for Entering and Exiting Buses. Every bus will be outfitted with a protective plexiglass surrounding the driver and every driver will be required to wear a face mask and shield. Social distancing must be maintained at every bus stop where students will be picked up. Students will enter the bus, one at a time. When the first student reaches the main level of the bus, the next student may enter. Students will fill all available space starting from the back of the bus. Every second seat in the bus will be marked off in order to provide adequate distance between students. Eating and drinking on the bus will be strictly prohibited. Two students may sit together, but only if they live in the same household. It will be mandatory for students to wear face masks while aboard the bus. All students are required to stay seated after the bus has arrived at the school. Students may begin to exit one by one, starting from the front of the bus. The bus driver or the bus monitor will assist with students exiting the bus. Any student with special needs that prevent them from wearing masks will have to arrange for alternate pickup and transportation to the school. Once the bus has dropped off all students at the school, the bus will return to the town garage to be properly disinfected on all its surfaces, including handrails, and seat coverings. At the end of the day, every school bus will be completely disinfected and washed from top to bottom. Following these guidelines and procedures will ensure the health and safety of all students for the new school year. And thank you for that, Spence, and the uh, entire uh, school bus crew here in, uh, in Gahnawaga. Well, uh, like I mentioned off the top of the program, Lloyd Phillips will be here and he'll tell you about some of the uh, things that are taking place uh, after the meeting that was held yesterday for the uh, task force and of course some of the uh, press releases that went out today. He also appeared on, on the radio earlier. So without any further ado, our Commissioner of Public Safety. Thank you, Joe. 
Okay, yeah, I think this afternoon will be fairly brief. Uh, I just wanted to touch base on a few items. I guess some of it is already, has already been made public, but I just wanted to uh, maybe give a little more background to some of the discussion that we had. Um, I guess maybe starting off with some of the issues regarding the opening of the schools. Uh, as we said several times now already on Facebook Live that uh, we have uh, been working uh, on plans on how to safely reopen uh, the schools in our community, looking at many examples uh, on, around, uh, you know, around the world and around the province of what they're doing, what they seem to be doing right, what, you know, what things that can be approved upon. Uh, so those things are, are obviously being assessed on, on a constant basis. And obviously the, the bulk of this work falls directly with the you know, Gunawaga education system uh, as they're taking the lead on, 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 uh, on this. Uh, but certainly uh, the task force here is to lend whatever support uh, is required. And, and, it, and there's many, many moving parts. And this morning, if you're watching uh, you know, um, or listening to K103, or watching them live on Facebook as well. Uh, you know, Robin Delarone was, was on there with myself and we did give a, a breakdown of a lot of the, the many moving parts. Uh, obviously, you know, the safety of, our, of the students and the parents and the, and the faculty is, is paramount. Uh, and we will be you know, bringing forward many different protocols on what they need to do uh, in, in terms of ensuring safety is, is again first and foremost and I think it's worth repeating uh, the way we want to work this forward and the, and the education center wants to move this forward is, is if we look at it from the, uh, a state of uh, a day in the life of, of a student and a day in, light of, a day in the life of, of a teacher you know, by, by that what we mean is what happens from a time you know a child you know, uh, gets up in the morning and, and getting ready for school, you know, they, there should be some health checks that are done you know, at the home before leaving. And then from there, you know, what do they do in terms of transportation to, uh, to the school, uh, whether that be uh, driven by the parent or, or if they're taking the, the school uh, transportation, bus transportation. And then again, once they get to the school, uh, what's the process to go into school? What's the process you know, once you get into class uh, at break time and, and at, uh, at at uh, again lunch and so on so that way it'll be clear for anybody who's entering the school whether you'll be a, a faculty member or whether you'll be a student it's clear on what your ex the expectations are from you again uh, paramount obviously is being the health and safety of of the students uh, now with that uh, as it was mentioned verbally uh, the, obviously the task force supports the fact of reopening the schools uh, it was uh, at a meeting yesterday it was adopted formally there was a, a directive issued uh, mandating the schools that to create the, the plans to safely reopen uh, and again obviously working closely with the task force uh, working closely with uh, with the medical people uh, dr. Goche is is available to review and uh, endorse protocols that are developed to again ensure maximum safety. So that was to a more of, of, of a formality, but uh, I think it's important uh, that the community is aware that this is a very much a, a collaborative effort to ensure uh, we do this in, in, in a proper manner. And that was some of the, the rationale for um, postponing the um, school openings. Uh, it was obviously, as most people know by now, uh, pushed back by two weeks because we want to make sure that uh, people feel as safe and secure as possible uh, to uh, when, they, when they send their child back to school, if that is your choice. Because as you may have known, uh, uh, the Education Center is also providing options for, uh, for parents who wish not to send their children to school, and obviously more information on that will be forthcoming. So we're trying to, to balance off um, the needs uh, to educate children. Uh, again, everything we do is looked at from a holistic approach. You know, the uh, mental well-being, uh, the physical well-being, obviously emotional well-being of, of our children is, is paramount. And, and being uh, in a classroom setting, you know, with, with, your, with your peers, with your friends, obviously helps with the emotional well-being uh, of, 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 of our students. But obviously, in an era of a pandemic, we have to take that, uh, you know, uh, very carefully. So we've been moving you no know, very slowly, uh, very you know very carefully and, and, and taking steps to bring us back to whatever that new normal is, is going to look like. And also part of that the, the steps included uh, in the meeting yesterday uh, was the, um, the green light given for uh, gyms to reopen. Uh, uh, again, gyms are an important part uh, for individuals, for, for their well-being, physical, mental, and as well as spiritual well-being as well, to be able to get a, get a good workout either uh, on a one-on-one -on -one or, or, or in a group setting. Uh, and as well as obviously there are people who are employed in that industry, and I'm sure they're going to welcome the news and to be able to um, have their businesses uh, reopen. Uh, 
There is a process in place for them. Uh, they are required to submit a, a safety uh, plan and protocol uh, on how they're going to operate their, their gyms uh, in a safe manner that will be vetted that, and, and once approved, they will be subject to a, an inspection and, and, and then once uh, their inspection is complete, they will be given again a certificate that they could open and operate and at this point we're looking at a maximum of eight uh, patrons at a time uh, in the building if the building is able to uh, sustain uh, that amount of people in, in a safe manner. So it's, it's uh, still moving things forward in, in, a, in a safe manner uh, as, as you possibly can and uh, looking at, again, all the factors that implement uh, the impact uh, uh, on the community. Uh, another area was step-by-step uh, -step, um, early learning center and, and daycares. Um, they are looking to increase their capacity uh, to be able to have a, a new year uh, start for them, which is uh, end of August. Uh, and that was discussed and supported by the task force uh, to increase the capacity uh, I guess what you can consider to be full capacity, but full capacity in, in, in the sense of them being able to maintain uh, their specific safety measures that they have established at daycares and step-by-step, -step, as long as they're able to safely maintain those measures and, and they, they can operate at a capacity in which they feel is, is, um, is, uh, is, is workable and, and is safe. And just a reminder to the community, step-by-step uh, -step has been doing a phenomenal job uh, since the beginning of the pandemic. They have, they have, have operated throughout uh, you no, know, providing daycare services for uh, essential services workers and also for other clientele and have gradually been building uh, up to, to have more and more um, uh, students or, or children in their facility. Uh, and they have had uh, zero uh, outbreaks, zero cases. So they've been doing an awesome job and, and moving forward, that's gave us the comfort to be able to support uh, the request to, to continue to, to provide these services again to the community. Uh, you know, as we know, also a lot of our, our uh, the people who are employed in the community depend on these services for child care and such. Uh, they depend on it for, for specialized uh, care, uh, respite care and so on. So it, it is an integral part of a community. And at this point, we feel confident uh, in their abilities and we gave the green light for them to move forward on that as well. Uh, so things again are moving in, in, in that direction. Uh, things are moving in a, in a positive direction. And, and in terms of, of that as well, if, you, if you're watching the numbers, which we always do here, what's happening you know, uh, around, around Ganawaga, uh, in the province of Quebec, what's happening in the Montreal region. Uh, as we've seen a couple of weeks ago, there, there was a spike in cases. There was some, some concerns that, that were being raised uh, after they had opened some of their uh, facilities. Uh, in the past few days, things have stabilized now in, in, in the Quebec region, mainly Montreal region, which is a, which is a positive sign. Uh, we're going to continue monitoring that, uh, seeing where that's going. Hopefully it will remain stable uh, and that will give us again some more security moving forward, looking at the next steps of, of, um, of reopening uh, whatever is required within the community. One step at a time, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but uh, we certainly have to look at again uh, everything that uh, we have in front of us, medical uh, advice, numbers, cases, and obviously first and foremost health and the holistic approach to keep our community safe. Uh, so with that, uh, I will leave it here. Uh, we'll be meeting again uh, next week. There's some many more things on the agenda for a discussion uh, with the task force, including, as I mentioned a couple of times now, the long-term planning, what are our next steps uh, to deal with a, um, a possible second wave, how are we gonna deal with that as a community? So a lot of information has been learned, a lot of, a lot of uh, lessons have been learned, uh, a lot of expertise has been gained, and we wanna make sure that we have that all in place properly in the event that we do need it in the coming months. So with that, uh, thank you very much, and I'll see you soon. On your way. Of course, Lloyd Phillips is the Commissioner of Public Safety here in Gahnawaga. So with that, that uh, pretty much wraps it up. I know we have a good weekend coming up, hopefully some really nice weather, and people will be able to uh, relax and, uh, you know, take it easy. In conversation with people, I know it's... Uh, People are at different points in their lives. I just wanted to put this thought out there that uh, we all talk to people, some who are just chomping at the bit to get moving and task force can't move quick enough to open things up. And then on the other hand, you have, it seems like just as many people saying, slow down. So it's a, always uh, a tightrope that has to be walked. And uh, so far, again, we have been I think very successful so far in keeping our community safe. So with that, don't forget, 
Boil water advisory continues. Uh, just uh, be paying attention when it's lifted. Everyone will be informed. And with that, thank you for watching, and we shall see you next time. Thank you very much. Niao Kodano, Onigiwahi.